um, in ArchiCAD the slab tool can be found in the toolbox under the design section um, we have the slab icon there. Now the slab icon in ArchiCAD doesn't necessarily mean a slab, it can also be any horizontal plane. So it might be ceiling plaster, it might be the top of a bench, it might be a shelf. Um, so basically the slab tool can be used for any horizontal plane and by giving it a different fill or composite structure you can use it to create any of those horizontal elements. As soon as I click on it, hit left mouse click on it, in the info box all the default settings propagate with all the materials and parameters for this particular slab that we're about to create. Or if there's already a slab on the floor plan and we select it, it will give you all the properties for that particular slab. Now whether you're on Macintosh or PC, it's a good idea to get a three button mouse because a lot of the functions can be accessed a lot quicker using the right mouse button and the wheel. So in this particular instance, um, we're going to use the wheel, by rolling the wheel we can scroll through all the different parameters of the slab that we're about to create. I can also use this handlebar if I want to, but uh, the slab that I'm about to create, these are all the parameters for it, and as I scroll through using my wheel we can see all of them. I can actually access them from here as well, but for the sake of clarity I'm going to click on the slab icon, which is either this button or this button here. So once I've left mouse clicked on it, this palette comes up, and this is the same information that's up here but it's organized a bit more clearly in this palette. So first of all, favorites. If I have created a slab earlier and given it certain materials, thickness, relative heights, and a whole heap of different things, if I wanted to save that so I don't have to go and fill this all in again, I can just click on favorites and then save the current settings and then you can call it something and you might have a, you might save a slab that's a ceiling and another one that's a bench top and another one that's upper floor joist for a building and you save those in once I just click on that it will all the settings from your favorite will fill or propagate this tool palette straight away so it's a quicker way of working so I'm just going to cancel out of there at the moment we have the geometry and positioning tab ex expanded if I left mouse click on these little arrows it expands it PC it has a similar sort of interface. Now, at the moment this slab that I'm about to create is going to be 300 thick, that's the thickness of the slab, and that is taken from the top of the slab down. So in terms of Project Zero running through your project, this would actually, this slab would actually show as minus 300 um, because of the top being at zero. Now, as you can see here, we're on story zero, so this slab we're about to draw, story zero will be zero, and of course project zero will be identical. Now, if we go over here, we can show this on a number of stories. Um, we can show it on the current story, one story up, one story down, one story up and down. We can show it all stories throughout the projects. We can even go one step beyond that by clicking on the custom tab and this gives us even more control over how that slab will look on the adjoining stories. We can choose different options to show the outline and we can also show the fill up and down in the project. So it's just a matter of reading those and, and, and checking the boxes and, and setting up exactly as you want but there's a lot of control there. And I'm just going to push OK to get out of there. Now once we've completed this area of the slab default settings dialog box, where I'm just going to collapse that and open. And the next section starts off with a structure. If I left mouse click on that, you can see that the cut fill at the moment is lightweight concrete. One thing, an important thing to know to take note of here is that if the geometry positioning box is open, and if this is greyed out, it will normally mean that this is actually a composite structure. So we can see that it's greyed out there, so that could be a possible excuse if you're wondering why that might be happening. But I'm just going to put that back to um, lightweight concrete, and you can see it's, we have access to it again so we can edit it. So I'm just going to collapse it again. Um, the structure, lightweight concrete, now if I want, I'm going to move this over to the left a little, a little bit. Now if I left mouse click on that, we can see that there's some composites that are uh, have been saved over here so I might just pick one of those and a composite is merely just a group of different fills that represent different materials and they're grouped together and once they're grouped together then they make up a, a particular type of structure so the thickness is set so we can change any of those at any stage so that's not a problem 
just going to expand this down here, move this back here. Now if I left mouse click and expand the cut surfaces dialog, we can see that the cut fill pen at the moment is 0.13 millimeters and it's pen number one in the table. So if I left mouse click on that, we can see if I change that, that figure changes there. I can also change this to any color I like. So we've got, once again, a lot of control. We can see the direct effect that that had on that straight away. Or we can apply the structure setting is, and that refers to how I set this composite up in the options composites dialog. So if I click on that, we can see that's how it was set up in that dialog box. So I'm just going to uncheck that again. And I can, as I just work my way down here, I can change the pens for we can see the effect that it's having on on that straight away so I'm just going to go back to zero and the cut lines the cut line the cut line refers to if a cross section or an elevation line cuts through the slab it will be surrounded or marked by this line and I can change that line by quick left mouse clicking on it and just picking another line I might want a dashed line um, and the type of pen and you can change the pen color and thickness as well so it's very clear where that where that is intersecting the section or cross section line. We can also apply the structure settings to this as well. Um, separator lines. The separator, the separator lines refer to lines between each layer of the composite fill. And once you've worked your way all the way down there, collapse that again, go to outlines. Now the outlines refer to how this slab will look in the floor plan. So the uncut lines are on the outside. Once again I can change it to any sort of line type I like. And the uncut line pens, that's the pen that it's going to be on the floor plan. We can also put a cover fill. If I check this box, <coughs> more dialogues, more, more options come up. And over here I can actually apply a cover fill and I can change that to any fill that's already in there or I can create my own fill. The important thing to note is that this cover fill relates to the 2D representation of this particular composite or this cut fill. Um, if I click on use fill of surface material that will override this vectorial 2D representation with the 2D representation that is set up in the materials dialog box because in the materials you can give a material a vectorial hatch and also a bitmap association we'll get into that a bit later um, but for the time being um, all you need to know is that if you want to override the 2D vectorial hatch that you've assigned to it here with the 3D material hatch that you've created elsewhere you just check that dialog box and that grays that out then we can also apply the, the cover fill can have any pen you like we can change that as we did as we have done before um, the, the background also um, I might just change it slightly so you can see it like that um, so you can change the pens and, and weights of the pens in the, in the cover fills as well. And the cover fill orientation is perhaps um, pretty important. Is you can actually link to a project origin, link to a fill origin, or distort it. Now if I was going to link to a fill origin, and uh, for example these tiles at the, at the moment are 30 by 30 centimeters. So if I clicked OK and I drew a, a little room that the cursor now, the intelligent cursor has now got the two handles, so if I click, if I wanted the tiles perhaps to propagate from down here, I'd left mouse click there, and then, um, and I just click again, and we can see that the tiles have arrayed themselves from this point where I clicked first. Now if I select that, again the handle is still live there, and I can actually change that to any orientation I like, so you can actually use fills to actually work out perhaps tile spacing or, or, or layouts of um, graphical objects on top of the slab. I deselect it by clicking outside in the white area somewhere and we can see how that's um, come together. So now we're just going to go over how to distort the fill on top of the slab. So I'm going to hold my shift key down, left mouse click on it 
and over here we see I've just moved this at the moment if I try and I'm holding my left mouse button down and the whole slab's moving which is not what I want so while I'm still holding the left mouse button down I can click on this icon here and then that allows me to move the handle of the fill so now I'm just going to double click on the slab tool again and then I'm going to change this to the distorted function and just push OK. Now we can see we've got two handles, this is new in version 10, so we can actually distort the way any fill looks and this is a very nice new feature in 10. So now we just have to adjust how we want this slab to look in 3D. I'm just going to open that palette again and I'm just going to close the floor plan and section tab and click on the model tab. Now in the model tab we have three we have a representation of the slab that's being that's selected at the moment and we have a top material, a side material and a bottom material. These can be changed as easy as left mouse clicking on these and picking another material. I'll just do something that's quite obvious. Red um, and on the edge there's a poured concrete and underneath is also poured concrete but I'm going to just change that to a white material which in this case is a surf stucco material. If I actually want to change all of them at the same time I just left, left mouse click and click the link materials tab there and we can see they've all changed to the same thing. So if I uncheck that it'll all go back to how it was before. So now if I go OK and just go to the 3D window by left mouse clicking on this icon here. Nothing's here at the moment, so I'll just click on this little icon here which says fit everything into screen. We can see here's our slab. There's a neat little shortcut here. If I hold down the shift key and the wheel of the mouse, it instantly goes into orbit function. Orbit orbit navigation of that slab, which is a neat little tool and um, if I let them go I'm back into editing mode so I can actually select the object and and edit that and I got a little bit off track there but it's a, a neat little feature so I'm just going to close that now and go back to I'm just going to close it up again so we can see this finally we've got listing and labeling and we're not going to go into this at the moment other than to say that every time a new object or something is placed into an ARCHICAD project. ARCHICAD gives that object and every object its own individual ID number. This is important later on when we're trying to use the calculate menu. So the final thing on this palette is the layers. So over here I've got the layer that it's actually on. Uh, if we want to change the layer that this slab's on it's just a matter of clicking on some some other layer and we can see that um, that's updated straight away. So once we're happy with that, we can push OK and we're ready to move on. Now that we've worked all the way through that slab palette, we're going to have a quick look at the, the slab here in the section and elevation window in particular to see the effect that all our parameters have had on it. So if I push, just push OK, I'm just going to draw a quick section, a cross section line through here and we'll talk about this in another section on this CD. Left mouse click and I'm going to right mouse click and just open that section elevation. Over here we see because we've cut through the slab we can see there's my composite and the different the different pens that have been set up for it. We can see that it's the top of the slab was at zero as denoted by the marker and it's 300 going down. going down, you can see, see it there, it's greyed out, but it's 290 going down, and we can see the hatch because we cut a cross section through it. Now if I just do an elevation, which I might just click on the north elevation, we can see that now that we're not cutting through the slab, we've got the grey material, uh, which is the concrete material that we assign to the slab, but we can still see it in that window.